I have been officially in the UK for 10 years. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mike Yannick Show, episode 70. I hope that you're doing well. Yes, and this is a very special day and a very special episode for me because as of the 21st of May 2021, year boy, the Bulgarian superstar Mike Yannick, I have officially been in the UK for 10 years my mind has exploded, okay, because this is so fucking wild, because even since I was a teenager, I always wanted to realize myself somewhere in the West, I know it sounds weird, we're gonna get into more details in the next few episodes, it's going to be, uh, this is part one out of probably three or four, and I'm going to go in full details, how I came to this country, and what I did the first four months, which was working in a strawberry farm, and then I worked in a cabbage farm, a lot of people don't know that about me, a lot of my mates, comedy mates, and all that stuff, and it was very wild and crazy time, and I was so young, and, and crazy, I had a shaved head when I first came here, it was crazy, I used to wear these baggy wrap clothes, it's crazy stuff, okay, it was very interesting, it was fun, it was very hard work, but I learned a lot of stuff, and I just want to recap, and kind of rehash, and just tell you some of the wild shit I saw, and I think it's going to be very interesting, because let's be fucking honest, if you're born in Britain, you've never worked on a farm, okay, unless you're like the kid of the farmer or somebody who owns a farm, but if you're like a kid born in the city, you don't work in a farm, I mean, come on, you you haven't even thought about working in a farm, you know what I'm saying, so I'm gonna go through all of that and just, I don't know, just to rehash how crazy life is, you know, so that's about it, okay, let's, let's get into it, no more shenanigans, so I arrived in the UK on the 21st of May 2021, okay, and <laughs> it'll be funny because of like, I'm going to be applying for citizenship one day and I hope that the people who are doing the research, because there's like this test of like good character or whatever, and they do some research on who you are and what you're doing and all that stuff. I hope that they, they don't find this podcast because if they find this podcast, fucking hell, mate, like I'm not getting a citizenship, you know what I'm saying? But if you're tracking the dates, you know, people from the UK government, I came 20, 21st of May, 2021, right? And... Um, I came through a work agency, so there was like these farm agencies, I think it was called, is it called Britannica or something, Britannia or something like that, I'm not sure, they're very famous, I think they're kind of like worldwide, and they have a lot of offices in Eastern Europe, and they say, send people everywhere, mostly America, yeah, worldwide, yeah, they send people to four countries, but yeah, I think Canada, America, Britain, France, Germany, I think that's about it, and um, it's mostly agricultural work during the summer because that's the easiest way you can get a visa, you can get work permits and all that stuff, right? And this was in 2011, so Bulgaria joined European Union in 2007, so we still had some work restrictions where you couldn't be employed, you can only be self-employed until 2014 or you can work in a farm with that, you know, visa and all that stuff, so it was kind of complicated and kind of strange, you know, but that was the rules back then, you know, and um, anyway, so when I was a teenager, it's so bizarre when I say this, but I always wanted to leave Bulgaria, that was like my dream, and if you're born in the West, and most of the listeners in the show are from Britain, America, Australia, and Canada, so, and a and few people from India, but like, if you're born in the West, you would not get this concept, like, what do you mean, like, your dream was to leave your country, it was, because the thing is, like, I, I, you know, I love my family, and I love Bulgaria, and all that stuff, but it's, I always felt like a small fish in a small, how do you call it, pond, or whatever, you know, like a, like a small, um, aquarium or whatever, you know, and I've never seen myself as a big fish, but I was like, you know what, I want to, I want to swim with the sharks, you know, and whatever happens, happens, I've always been like that, so, since I was a kid, I always wanted, I was always fascinated with business and just doing something for yourself, you know what I mean, I don't want to work for nobody else, I've always been that way, and nobody's like that in my family, you know, besides my uncle, but he's not blood relative, you know, and, we have some successful people, like distant relatives, but, it, you know, it's working for somebody else or like they have like small businesses and I've never wanted that. I was like, no, either everything or nothing. Fuck it, you know what I mean? And now when I get older, I'm kind of balancing things out, to be honest with you, because that's a crazy way to look at life, you know, hey, 100% or 0%, I don't want no middle, you know, like it doesn't work that way. It's wild. But when you're 19, you know what I mean? That's how you think. And I've always wanted that. And I even remember when I was a kid, when I was probably 16, 17, 18, 
I used to go to the, because I didn't have my own room, you know, if you've been following this podcast and if you know me, you know my background, you know, one small commie black, five people, we live there, poor family, so I didn't have my own room and shit like that, but the kitchen was kind of, there was like a little TV and there was like a little couch, one person, little couch, so it wasn't even a couch, like a bed, it was so bizarre, you know, anyway, so I hang out there most of the time, because that was the time where people either, my mom will go to the terrace to smoke, or on the, or the big terrace in the living room, and when somebody cooked, so most of the time, there was nobody there, so I was always there, and I remember during the, when I had spring break, and you know, I'm not going to school and stuff, I used to stay late, and my favorite thing is I had this cell phone, this little Motorola, Nokia, whatever, I don't know. And they had like, you can put music on it, you know. That was the big deal. That was in 2007 or 8 or whatever. It wasn't a touch screen or anything like that. But you can put, you can use it as an MP3 player. That was a big thing, right? So I had all my songs and I used to play my, you know, during the summer and it was like midnight. I used to go to the terrace and it's pitch black, you know. It's pitch black, it's super quiet, it's warm and stuff. And I used to just go there and just hang out there. Just put like a little seat or whatever and just, just lean on, on the thing and just look at the skies or whatever and just have my music on and just visual how one day you know I will be in the west and I don't know in America or in Germany or in Britain and you know like I'll have a decent life and I'll have my own place and I'll have my own business and do whatever I want and all that stuff you know and how fucking wild is this you know I was visualizing this stuff 12 13 15 years ago and I'm staying here now in front of you 12 13 years later and I've actually had that of course, I don't have a lot of money. I work part time, but you know, like I don't, I don't have a nice place. I mean, I have like a small place, but I'm very happy with what I have. I'm very proud of myself, even though I think pride is not a good, it's not a good virtue to have. I mean, being feel, feeling happy or good about yourself, it's good, but you know, I don't think pride is such a good issue. But listen, hey, pri- uh, but you know, the pride festivals and the carnivals, fucking love them. Okay, let's keep that shit going. <laughs> drag queens and you know saying and happy gay dudes fuck yeah bro that's what i love you know <laughs> uh anyway i'm just I'm, I'm just messing about and um but yeah keep keep the pride carnivals going and anyway so so fucking bizarre you know what i mean and uh just visualizing something you know how bizarre is that you just visualize something and then happens 15 years ago or whatever but i'm free you know i'm independent i do what i want i do the podcast i do comedy i have some other side hustles that i don't always disclose you know until i they materialized so i'm very happy i'm very free finally you know after all these years because i lived with all my family like i've always said i love my family but i love them from a distance you know what i mean because they're crazy they're crazy bro it's a fucking everybody's everybody's business and they're all loud and they're crazy it's like a italian family you know like a stereotype that type of shit it's wild you know and you have this guy and there's like a fucked up uncle somewhere and there's like the second cousin who needs money and somebody's alcoholic and it's, it's so much drama and pressure you know and uh, I, I've always liked to be by myself. I'm a fuck. Uh, I'm a cat. You know what I mean. And uh, just, just, I just want to be by myself. Don't, don't bother me. You know. Anyway, so it was bizarre, and I was always thinking about that. But it was kind of like one of those things where you kind of think about it, but you're like, I don't know if it's gonna happen. I wish it's gonna happen. I don't know how it's going to happen. You know. But I really want to happen, and things will pop up. Anyway, yours passed by and I was very happy in Bulgaria as well I was doing my stuff it wasn't like I was sitting and crying all the time I had a great social life I was doing my little projects I was playing basketball for four or five years then I was boxing for a for a few years and you know what I mean so there was it was fun it was great you know and I always I I started like a t-shirt company and like had my little businesses and this and that so I was always hustling and bustling there was never there was never a day off for Mikey boy you know what I'm saying? I don't take days off. It's very rare. And uh, now I started to have a missus and stuff. I have to. Mm. But anyway, so one day I heard about a guy, okay, a friend of a friend who had two older brothers. So this guy, he was our age, you know what I mean? And at that time we were like maybe like 19, 20 or something, you know? And, uh, you know, I'm, yeah, so I heard about his two brothers. They were older than him. They were maybe like 25, 26, even 30. What they did, they go to America and they worked there for six months, I think, as lifeguards or like stacking, I don't know, stuff in markets or in that type of stuff, you know, just random jobs in America. They go there, they work for six months and then they come back because they make so much money and they live 
the next six months in Bulgaria without finding, finding any work, you know, and they have a contract and the next six months they go back to America. And I was like, what the fuck? I've never heard of that. You know what I mean? And back then I did have a computer. I don't know. The internet was a bit weird. It's not like now. You kind of, I mean, you still use it, but I mostly use my computer for a bit of Facebook and mostly video games. You know what I mean? And a bit of jerking off. I mean, let's be fucking honest here. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we kidding? You know, when you're fucking teenager. But you know what I mean? So I didn't really Google shit, you know? And uh, so I didn't even know that stuff like that existed, you know? And I was like, can you ask them about blah, 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 what's the name of the company? So they gave me the name of the company. And the one that I went was a different one. So we just Googled it, right? And we started doing some research and some people, you know, in forums. It was mostly forums back then. And people were saying, yeah, yeah, this is good, this is bad. And some people were complaining. But a few people mentioned... Because this was like mostly towards America and I think Canada. And I was like, that's too far away. I've never even been outside of my country at that point, you know. I was like, I can't fucking go to America just like that. Even though my cousin went one time. Oh my God, such a crazy story. I'll just tell it very quickly and I'll go back to it two minutes. My second cousin, okay, he's, he's amazing. He's such a crazy wild guy, right? <laughs> but like he got into one of those agencies. And it turns out to be fake. So they paid all that money. And the thing was, he's going to go, I think he went to like North Carolina or something like that. He's going to go there. He's going to be at the airport. Charlotte, I think. Yeah, or something like that. They're going to wait for him. You know, his job is secured. His house, where he's going to live, everything is sorted out because that's why he paid for, right? So everything is secure. They're going to pick him up and they're going to start the job the next day in a restaurant or something like that. He went there. He, again, he's never been outside of the country, I think. He went there. Nobody showed up. There was no work for him. Nobody waiting for him. Fucking nothing. He literally traveled around 20 hours or something with, with a plane paid fucking 2,000 quid or something for the ticket. Nobody showed up. And this fucking guy in 24 hours, right? I don't know. How, his English is not even that good, to be honest with you. I don't know now, but, you know, when I was growing up, I remember. He found, in 24 hours, he found a place where to live. He found uh, a, uh, a job. And he even managed to make friends in a few in a few days. I was like, what the fuck? He's amazing. You know what I mean? He's very... But he said he didn't like it. He st stayed there for six months or whatever so he can make his money back. He made a bit of money and he come back. But he's, yeah, he's just crazy guy like that, you know? If that was me, I would be panicking a lot, you know? Especially back in the day. And uh, so, yeah. So, we heard about this company, you know, my company. I think Britannica or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure, and which I think I'm blackmailed from now. I'm on the blacklist. I'm not sure, but I think I am, and I'll tell you why. Probably, the probably the next episode. Oh, okay, I have a bit of time. Uh, I have a few more minutes. And anyway, so <laughs> so funny. And we we're like, hold on, there's like this other company who goes mostly to Britain and like Ireland and like Germany. So we started typing them, and it turns out that they have an office, literally, maybe. 12 13 minutes away from my house walking it's like in my cousin's neighborhood you know and i was like oh wow they, they have an office oh fuck i'm giving out too much information now if there's some psycho out there trying to google shit and try to find where i used to live and stuff like that <laughs> no when i open a patreon one day i will post you know what let's fucking grow this thing i really want to grow this thing you know what i'm saying and when i start going back doing comedy i'll really promote this let's fucking grow this thing okay and i want to pay open a patreon i've said that many times i want to open a patreon it's going to be one pound a month okay that's it i don't want your money you know what i'm saying because my view is if i charge you five six seven quid a month which you know is the average a patreon most people charge but hold on that's netflix money i mean i cannot provide you the value and the content the amount of it and the high production that netflix has and I think in a way like I'm not better than Netflix, I'm not better than Amazon Prime or Hulu or Disney Plus. So I was like, I can give you a quid, you know, and I'll give you extra shows, I'll give you behind the scenes, I'll do like a few other shows that are going to be for Patreon, and I'm going to do a lot of, you know, like I can show you some pictures from my childhood of people interested, and I can give you more of these stories, you know, but I want to be behind the paywall, you know, I want to be like people who really want to see that shit, I don't want random people who don't care to see it, you know. Anyway, we'll do it one day, so make sure to tell a friend and subscribe and all that stuff, you know. Um, so, we're like, okay, hold on, this this kind of interesting, you know. So, we did a bit of research before that. We contacted them and all that stuff to see how it works, you know. And they said, because I think, so they had a, so they send all their people around May, you know. So, uh, I think you, the deadline is, 
I think middle of March. And I think, what was it? Were, were we just met? No, I think we were just about to get it in. You know what I mean? There was literally like a few weeks left, like three weeks or something like that. And we were like, mm, okay, like, let's, let's, you know, because they said there's like an interview, there's a whole process, you know what I mean? They just don't take anybody because you need to have, you need to speak English and stuff like that, you know? And you had two criteria: Either if you had previous work in a farm or you've been outside of the country or you kind of know what's what when it, it's regarding to that type of work or if your English was really good but you've never worked in a farm or physical job like that. I've worked in a restaurant and a car wash but it was, oh, that was, the farm was way crazier, you know? And obviously I didn't have the experience but my English was good, you know? My English is way better now but even back then it was quite good, you know? Compared to, I'm not exaggerating, like the people that I was in the farm, there was... I don't know, probably from the Bulgarian side, there was like probably like two people who spoke English kind of okay, you know, and I, my English was the best. I'm not bragging, it's just what happened, you know, and everybody wanted to beat me up because of it, you know. This is a story that towards the next few episodes, you'll hear about it. I almost got jumped in that form, you know, and uh, it was fucking crazy. So, yeah, so my English was good, and so, yeah, so we went, and there was like, there was, of course, there was like a little sit-down, you can see what it is, they give you a pamphlet, you just talk about it, that's not even the interview, so we sit, so they explain, so we just like, we just want to hear what this is, because we've never seen this before, you know, so they just told me what everything is, so what happens is, you know, like after we approve you, you pay the amount, because that secures you the ticket, it secures you uh, the transportation, because you know, somebody's gonna come and pick you up, they're gonna help you out, it secures you all the documents, they're gonna you know, so you can have, I, I still have it, I still own it, see if I have Patreon, I'll post it on Patreon, it's like a little visa, or whatever, it's this massive piece of paper, with all these fucking stamps and pictures and all that shit, and brotheries on them or whatever, and um, that's gonna provide all that stuff, you know, and it's gonna give you like a little welcoming package, package, and I think like the first week of your rent, where you're gonna live is paid as well, all that stuff, you know, the sum was very kind of reasonable, it was around... 1,500 lever, I think, which at that time, the pound was very strong, the pound was like 250, you know, so that's about six, 700 pounds, and they also advise that you need to have, because, you know, it takes about 10 days since you start working before you get paid, so, or I think two weeks, so you need to have around 400 pounds you know, for yourself, spending, for food and that type of stuff, and they said it's good to have, two, and it's 200 pounds for, for, what was it, for the rent, because, you know, they cover the first week, but the next week or something like that, I'm not sure, but I remember we, around 2,200 level, you know what I mean, which is 1,000 pounds, roughly, right, and for us, was a lot of money, like, my mom, her salary was 350 level, you know, and at that time, I think I was unemployed, I mean, I was doing a bit of eBay and all that stuff, but I wasn't employed, pretty much, and I was making, like, 100 level, which is, like, 50 quid a month or something like that, so we didn't have any money, I remember she borrowed some money, and I took, borrowed some money from my dad, and she borrowed maybe from a bank or something, I don't fucking know, but we definitely borrowed some money, so I was like, you know, when I go, I definitely need to at least make that money back so I can pay the debt, you know, and maybe have some for me, so it was difficult, it wasn't just like, oh yeah, here you go, like fucking 500 quid, no issue, and just go, it was, it was quite difficult, and um, I'm just looking, because my fucking, anyway, and uh, so we were just like, and then we walked back home, and she was like, what do you think about it, because we went together, you know, and I was like, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that's the only option, and, and I was very keen, and that's the thing with me, when I'm like very keen on something, and when I have my mind on it, I do it, you know what I mean, sometimes I don't even think about it, you know, if I want to start a business, or move to a place, or whatever it is, or apply for a job, or quit my job, sometimes I do this stuff, you know, now I really think think true, but now, when I was young, I kind of go with my gut feeling, you know, and I was really, really pumped up for it, and the thing was, I was like, okay, let's do the interview, you know, and because we got an email the few, few days later, and I'll never forget this, it was literally a Thursday night, I opened my email, and we had an email from them, and I think it was kind of one of those, they were kind of pushing us, because, you know, they make money out of it, so they were kind of like, we send you an offer for an interview, uh, oh no, I think, yeah, but you have to accept it now.
now otherwise you can never otherwise the offer goes away and you will never be able to apply with us and you know i was young and my mom you know she really wanted to help me out and i was a bit naive I, they were probably lying meaning like <clears throat> even if i said can i take the in interview for next year or just wait a bit you know i don't think they'll, they'll say no but i was kind of scared because i was really keen and that was like my only option that i can go because we, my cousin was in liverpool she was studying maybe we could actually go you know just move here but i didn't have documents so it was quite difficult you know and uh being self-employed and it, it back back then it was so weird you cannot if i come here in 2011 in liverpool i cannot just walk into a place and just hand my cv because when they see bulgarian and when they click and it says you're not allowed to be employed because you have seven year restriction on work when you enter the european union back in the day so i couldn't just walk in and get a job at a chip shop or whatever i have to start a business i'm 19 bro i'm broke where the fuck i'm gonna start that business you know being self-employed doesn't work that way you know so <clears throat> so that was not an option and i was like you know what i think that's an option to do it and i was scared and i was like oh you know i don't want to get banned or whatever so we re replied literally they said you need to reply by friday three o'clock right and we replied at thursday at fucking half eight or whatever and you know i was at, at that time you know my mom didn't have money and we were always arguing and it was it was so much pressure i just wanted to get out of everything out of the country out of the house be i just need to be by myself and just try to grow as a person just try to be like okay can i do this by myself you know like can i i'm nine i'm 21 at that stage you know uh, about turned 22 in september and i was like i'm kind of a grown-up you know but i'm still a teenager i'm still a kid and i'm a late bloomer so i kind of looked like a fucking teenager as well and i was like let's see if i can do this by myself you know and i was like okay let's do it so a few days later we go to the place and i'm about to have the interview you know and i'm very nervous and they you know they have all the documents they we have like a certain yeah, amount of documents that they need to be prepared i prepared it and i just went and i remember there was like in this building oh my god such a weird building It's behind the block of flats okay yes might give out more information okay <laughs> so people can stalk it but i don't think it's there anymore that was fucking 10 years ago i don't even know if this company still exists to be honest with you and uh but in all fairness i was so surprised everything was legit with them like i was because we were reading some stuff and i knew some people who got burned and stuff and i was thinking i was literally expecting to go and nobody to show up to take my money and to be in the other part of europe you know but they turned out to be legit which i was very well pleasantly surprised you know and uh so we go to this fucking old building super old building i think they used to be like a a wing of a hospital or something but it's not a hospital anymore i don't know they had gates and stuff it was bizarre so we walk inside it was like these makeshift offices so i walk in it was the last floor so i opened the door and it was this kind of not that big of a room with a massive desk like i remember the desk was so big i think there were even two desks and chairs around it and i remember every time somebody stood up and wanted to go out it's kind of like you know like you, you barely like in a cinema you barely moving or whatever it was so bizarre right so I sit there and they were like, hello, hello. I think they were like a guy who was like very bossy, you know, like he was in charge and two women as well. So we were doing the interview and the first half was, you know, this thing. What type of experience do you have? And I said, I've worked in a restaurant. Uh, I worked in a car wash and like stuff like that, you know. But there was like, you know, it's like mm, restaurant, me cooking food. You're not really, you know what I mean? There was a completely different job. And they were like, oh, you know, like it's not going well. I can see that it's not going well. There was like unfortunately you know like your criteria the first one doesn't cover it you know and he was like let's check your writing and speaking you know english because that's very important and a lot of times he said that sometimes they'll form because it's always in groups that was a good thing you know and the reason they were so pushy is because you know the deadline is i think like i said mid of april or march or something and they have a certain amount i think it was like 14 people per group or like 10 people or something and once that group is filled from uh because i think it was by regions or or which farm it goes when it's filled it's filled and then next year you know and that's it you don't have any opportunities you have to wait one year and um and sometimes they said because our group is almost filled and nobody speaks good english because you know they interviewed everybody uh sometimes they literally take a person that will be like a translator because 
you go to the airport, you land in UK, you need somebody to like go through the checks and this and that and the farmers, nobody speaks Bulgarian, you know, and sometimes you may be the only Bulgarian group. So you literally need somebody who speaks good English to navigate everything, you know, and every week we were they were taking us to the shops to buy food and you need a person to speak and all that stuff, you know. And then I aced, you know, the test, the English test. It was literally just writing a little bit and just some sentences. And then we talked, you know, and they were just literally asking me questions. If they were the farmers, how did you get here? What's your name? And I had no issue. I have never had issues with speaking English, you know. So I just kind of aced it and they were like, oh, wow, you know, like you speak very well. And he was like, well, you don't pass the first criteria. You know, you're like a small little wimp boy, but your English is good. So they literally because of my English. So they take me, you know, and I was like, okay, I was very excited. And then, you know, we transferred the money and all that stuff. And they gave me a date, you know, they gave me a date, which was the, so we arrived on the 21st in the morning. So that means on the 20th, because it was during the night of the flight. Yeah. 20th of May, 2011, you're leaving, you know, and the contract was officially for two months i spent a total of yeah yeah i spent a total of four months so two months and a half was the first form and it finishes but you have an option where you can extend for the next two months for the end of the summer until i think was the middle of september or end of september you can extend and that's it right and it depends on how it goes on the first form if they like you if you you know if you're doing well you can extend right so Okay, a few moments. I'm just looking because, you know, I don't want to go overboard and it's a long story. So I was like, okay, let's, you know, let, let's do this. And I was like, okay, we agreed on everything. My plan, initial plan was, and I didn't tell that to anybody. I didn't tell it to uh, any of my friends. I think I told it only to my mom and dad because they needed to know what's happening. But I said, I'm leaving and I'm never coming. And I said, I'm leaving. And the next time I come back, it will be as a tourist. That was my plan because I said to all my friends and most of the people, they kind of knew that I'm going away for the summer and I'm coming back. But I was like, I'm not, I'm never coming back. Like I will visit, but I'm not coming back. You know what I mean? I don't know why. It was was just, just one of those things, you know, when you have a fixed idea sometimes and you just go all in, you don't care what it takes, but it just, I think I just had enough, you know, like my mom didn't have job for ages for about six months. I didn't have job, was so broke, so fucking poor and my family it's like i've lived with them for so long that you have no personal space we were living in a little apartment i have my own room but i don't know i had no perspectives and i was seeing like all my friends because we're growing up now we're almost you know like 21 getting 22 high school is over high school is over three years ago right and most people are going to study you know like fucking universities and i see everybody like kind of doing their own thing and the groups are kind of dispersing and some people are going abroad and everybody's all over the place and i didn't want to study study was never my thing and i was like i i studied for six months and i dropped out you know that's a story for another time but i was like it's not my thing i don't want to do that and i kind of felt like going to the uk or to the west was the only way that i can succeed i was like there's no opportunities for me and Bulgaria and I have always been insanely ambitious, you know. And I was like, okay, fuck it, let, let's do it. I mean, I'll miss everybody, but, you know. And to be honest with you, I kind of didn't know what I was getting myself into. Because, like, a few years later, I was missing them so much. And I had these periods, now I'm okay, but you always have, like, ups and downs. And if you're a foreigner listening to this in a foreign country, especially if you lived by yourself and your family's back home, you exactly know what I'm talking about. Because at the beginning, you don't miss anybody because you're so fucking focused to making it, to survive, to have documents to have a place to live make some money whatever it is right but then you get to a point where you kind of established a little bit you have the documents now you have a rent place maybe you have a little job you kind of okay and then you kind of okay i managed and you're like oh fuck i miss my family i miss my friends i miss my country or whatever and then you go down but then you think about it and then you go up again because you accomplish a bit some more and you always up and it's an emotional roller coaster you know and if you if you if you've never been away from your family and your friends or your country or whatever you never you never experience it you know and it's very hard but it's just part of life you know if you want to grow you just have to fucking make some sacrifices you know they call me making big decisions over here and um but yeah so i was like okay 
And I told all my friends, you know, oh, I'll be back and all that stuff, you know. And what we did, I'll never forget this. This was probably the best two weeks of my life. The last two weeks, because everybody, I, I used to be a social butterfly. I used to know so many people, so many friends. And because of my, you know, my basketball and because of the business, the t-shirts, they were very popular. I knew so many people and, you know, especially like the hip hop community and that type of stuff. Everybody knew me, everybody loved me, and I loved everybody. And the last two weeks, because word got out that, you know, Mike is leaving for the next four months or whatever, the last two weeks, uh, I spent, it was the best two weeks I had. You know, in the office where Michael Scott, right before he leaves, he has a list, leaves, he has a list, and he spends that little moment with everybody saying goodbye. Same stuff happened with me, you know, as they were thinking that I'll be back in four months, but I knew I'll never, I'll probably never see them again. Or if I see them, it's going to be five years from now, six years from now, where our lives have completely went to such different directions. I even tried to text some of my old mates. There's one that I keep in touch with, and, you know, we kind of like, you know, I, we're kind of the same wavelength still after all these years. But some of them, when I text them, I know that their lives are completely different. I'm I'm nobody in their life anymore because, you know, we haven't seen each other in 10 years. I don't expect them, you know, f to still think about me, care about me and being friends. That's completely normal, you know. Things really, really change very fast, you know. And everybody, with some of them, we went for drinks, meals, or some of them, we played basketball. It was so fucking amazing. And I had a moment with every single person in my life. We we spent the time and the things that we used to do. With some of them, we went and we got fucking pissed, you know, fucking drunk on in the park. With some of them, play basketball, whatever it is, you know. We had a little moment. And, I, and right I was leaving, I was like, fucking hell, man, that, that feels fucking amazing. And I that was the one moment I was like, fuck, am I making a mistake here, you know. And... Um, and in the next episode, haha, look how I'm ending it on a, on a cliffhanger. On the next episode, I will tell you, you know, the last few moments with my dad and my uncle and me going to the airport and meeting the people in my group. There was like a few moments. And the first time I traveled with an airplane because I've never traveled with an airplane. Yeah, this is going to be fucking long, probably five or six episodes. But it's an interesting story. And they're not going to be as funny as well, like as the other episodes. They're complete shenanigans. But it's gonna, I think they're going to be interesting, you know. Okay, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this first part of the my journey in the UK. And I will see you next week for part number two, dos, uno, dos, tres, okay? I hope you enjoyed the show. Spread the word, okay? Spread the word of the Mike Yannick show. Subscribe and all that stuff, okay? I will see you next week. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye.